The year is 2000 and Supreme is in its infancy. Only have been around six years at the time, they created a collection that would go down in history as one of their most infamous. This is the story behind Supreme and Louis Vuitton, how they went from a cease and desist order to an official collaboration 17 years later. Let's talk about Supreme and Louis Vuitton. So the year is 2000. Supreme has been around for six years, started in 1994. They're an upstart skate brand created by James Jebbia. People are starting to notice them. They're creating these cool designs. A year later, they would go on to release the 911 box logo. They were just still starting out. In 1997, they created a Burberry logo, taking the check print and putting it on a box logo t-shirt. Burberry did not actually reach out for any official lawsuit because it was only in their third year, it could have actually flown under the radar for the larger British fashion house. But in 2000, Supreme was able to catch the attention of French fashion house Louis Vuitton, LVMH Corporation, and they were not happy that Supreme had created a monogram print emblazoned with the Supreme S in place of the LV. This collection was incredibly sick, releasing skateboards, beanies, and t-shirts emblazoned with Louis Vuitton's design in the iconic brown and gold and other similar colorways. Today, you can find these pieces selling on eBay for literally tens of thousands of dollars, with the stickers being worth hundreds, the beanies being worth unknown. It's really difficult to even find this stuff in reasonable or any kind of condition at all, not to mention legitimate sealed dead stock items. It's crazy because when you think about fashion today, streetwear and fashion, I'd say in a big part, thanks to Virgil Abloh, who was the creative director at Louis Vuitton. Now you see Supreme and Louis Vuitton collabing in 2017. But that is not how it started off when they first released these items. Louis Vuitton was very upset with Supreme. They had stolen their brand's iconography. They basically stole their identity and put a box logo on it, releasing it to a bunch of skater kids in New York City in 2000. Supreme was really happy with it though. They loved doing this stuff and continue to do it for many years and still to this day do take inspiration, designs, and art from other people rebranding it and remixing it in their own way, which in my opinion definitely treads the line on fair use and freedom of expression because copyright is certainly very important. But again, Supreme at this time did not care at all what they were doing to Louis Vuitton. It says here in an article by High Snobiety a few years ago that Supreme's website denotes the turmoil with a badge of courage, noting that the decks were recalled after two weeks due to lawsuit. I think they were really happy to do it and the people that were able to actually buy it certainly were very happy because these skateboards became incredibly famous, probably more infamous than anything. But Supreme was still growing at this time. They were on the upstart. You could still go into the store and actually get a box logo relatively easily. It wasn't incredibly difficult. They didn't have the same kind of Thursday drops that had people flooding their stores and resellers scrambling to get the latest drops so they could go flip them on eBay. It was a much different time. And it wasn't Supreme's idea to actually make a counterfeit knockoff Louis Vuitton. They really wanted to see how far they could go with using brand inspirations. Like they weren't trying to convince you that this is a Louis Vuitton skateboard. They wanted you to know that it was Supreme. Doesn't this look like Louis Vuitton? And Louis Vuitton was not too happy about that again. I think this collection is incredibly important and really interesting to look back on the historical significance. When you ask the everyday person, what is a high fashion brand? They might mention Gucci, Prada, but they'll probably say Louis Vuitton before anything else. Something about the brand's design, the LV, the monogram print, the leather, the colors, it's incredibly timeless, stylish, and exceeds the name fashion. It but going back to the Supreme Collection, they released a series of items again. Beanies, t-shirts, skate decks, and box logo stickers. And I think they're incredibly sick. The beanies are probably the most unknown sleeper item from that collection. 
given that it's just a simple beanie. From what I can tell, there was three, maybe four colorways of this beanie. We had brown and gold, black and gold, caramel and brown, and gray and brown. Very clean colorways and still hold up to this day in being stylish, cool, and definitely iconic. Probably the most well-known part of the collection was the box logo t-shirt. And it's the classic Supreme Box logo formula. We have a cotton t-shirt with a small screen printed box logo, this time saying Supreme and emboldened with the Louis Vuitton monogram symbols. But instead of LV, we have the S and a dollar sign through it. These box logos are incredibly difficult to find in any sort of condition today. And if you do find one, be ready to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars as these almost 24 year old t-shirts have been around for so long and the screen printing is only so, so it's only a matter of time before that thing gets destroyed. If you wash it too many times, the smallest and most affordable piece of the collection is the Louis Vuitton box logo sticker set, which I think it's amazing that they're still able to use Louis Vuitton in the title. I guess they're brand collaborators these days, so maybe they don't care that StockX is using that nomenclature. But nevertheless, you can buy all three stickers, the black and white, brown and light brown, as well as off white and black on StockX for about $400. Now these have sold for various prices over the years, but they do hover around that 450 to 280 price range. And while that might seem crazy for three stickers, the limitedness of this collection cannot be overstated. These were incredibly small volume pieces. And after having a cease and desist after only two weeks of production, and remember, this is not modern Supreme. People were not lining out the door to go buy this stuff. They were just releasing it and putting it in the store. They did not even have a website at this point. This was all sold at one store in New York City six years after the brand's inception. Finally, we're to the skateboard set and my personal favorite part of the collection. I think it has to do with just the pure amount of surface area involved and just how good it looks, especially when you can see the rare sealed or at least brand new sets that have never been skated. Still, a lot of them do have some paint chipping and wear just because even storing this stuff in plastic over 24 years can lead to a little bit of damage and a little bit of wear. But these pieces have sold for as high as $30,000 for the entire set. I would say today that's like a floor price. Of course, the aftermarket price is always a combination of what the buyer is willing to pay and what the seller is willing to take. But it's no question that these things are far beyond the $10,000 price range when you put all three of the skateboards together. Again, the three colorways are that dark brown and light brown, the kind of iconic Louis Vuitton spec we have the light cream and black and then the black and cream kind of a flip on those two colors right there so those were the original items that supreme ripped off from louis vuitton and after only production lasting for two weeks louis vuitton reached out to the brand and told them to immediately stop production and to destroy all remaining stock now i don't know what happened to that remaining stock if it was backdoored or actually just destroyed i don't really know and i think it'd be pretty tough to find out unless we asked james jebbia himself but 17 years later the brands would make contact yet again no, 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 brother. I appreciate you. This sounds like a new opportunity. <laughs> 17 years later, Supreme and Louis Vuitton have now announced their official collaboration at Paris Fashion Week in January of 2017. This collection is a literal example of how far streetwear and high fashion have come to now both respect each other on an equal playing ground. The collection is too big to even get into specifics. We had trucker jackets, skateboards, accessories, trench coats, jerseys, hoodies, box logos, pants, jeans, crewnecks, literally every single piece you can imagine Supreme and Louis V came through with absolute fire. And this is one of the most sought after expensive exclusive collections Supreme has ever released. And yes, I am very salty. I never copped any because in 2017, I was in college and a hashtag broke boy. It's really amazing how 
a brand can go from kind of a cultural niche in a New York skate shop on Lafayette Street, founded by a British guy who just liked to say fuck them, getting the attention from French fashion houses, sending cease and desist letters to stop producing merch that looks like our logo, to then releasing $1,000 trunks with the same brand 17 years later. It's really incredible to kind of see the story of Supreme and Louis Vuitton. And the point of this video was to kind of catalog what it's been like for both of the brands. And if we look back to the original skateboard and the new skateboard, you can see the design was almost exactly the same. Except now, of course, it's in red and white using Supreme's colors because in a way, Supreme was carrying a lot of the weight of this collection. A lot of people that are into Supreme, into streetwear, probably got their first experience of copying Louis Vuitton from this very collab. And on the other note, there was probably probably other Louis Vuitton, more astute, refined, classic enjoyers of luxury goods that got a little taste of that hype beast glory with the supreme Louis Vuitton items, maybe more a low key piece and not the bright red skateboard. But nevertheless, the inspiration for the design was way back in 2000 and then capitalized further on in 2017 with the official branding, the expanded collection. And now with Supreme being a household name, people lining out the door, weekly drop lists, bots, all the craziness of the late 2010s, we saw them flesh out an entire collection that goes beyond just a t-shirt, box logo, beanie, and skateboard, which at the time was extremely impressive, but nowadays would be looked at as a simple and small collection. So what do you guys think? Which collection is better? The old school knockoff Supreme doing their own thing? Definitely a lot more esoteric. Not as many people know about it. And there is some glory in Supreme just saying, fuck them. We're just going to make this and see what happens. Getting Louis Vuitton's attention and having them eventually come down on it. Or do you like the official collaboration? Louis Vuitton acknowledging that Supreme can bring something to the table and it's in both of their interests to collaborate together on the apparel, accessories, and the entire collection. I don't know, for me it's really tough because I do like the old stuff. I love the skateboards. I love what it represented more than anything. Supreme truly not giving a fuck and just wanting to do their own thing. But there is also something super sick about the new official collaboration that has the widest variety of pieces from pillows, skateboards, trunks, t-shirts, and more. Whatever it is, I think they're both really cool and I wanted to share this with you guys today to kind of tell the story of Supreme and Louis Vuitton. It's been your boy Thomas. Until next time, guys. Peace.